All right, my people. I know I've been MIA for a, a couple of days, but man, we've been running, burning that, burning that candle at both ends, burning the midnight oil. No excuses. <laughs> but I did want to drop a quick video. And I know it's later in the day when I'm dropping this, but first and foremost, I want to challenge you to share this video. This video is so important for the church, our country, the future. You know, and, and I don't live in fear, so let me let me, you know, say this up front. Anything I'm about to share is not rooted in fear or nervousness or anxiety or anything like that. Listen, God is on the throne and we have to rest and be secure that he is in control, that nothing has taken him by surprise. What we have to round up and, and keep a, a tab on is our own emotions with what's happening in our country. I'm not going to sit here and talk for a few minutes about this political party or that political party, but this video is about the election coming up here in just a week and a half. You know, George Barna, which is pretty spot on on most of the polls that he is <laughs> that he's conducted over the many years, um, he came out and said that 51% of evangelical Christians said they're not going to vote. Over half the church. And to me, that blows my mind. It absolutely just astonishes me that that, that number is, number one, you know, is probably pretty accurate. And I don't understand why. And I, I don't pretend to be a... You know, a political guru, because I don't, I don't enjoy politics and all of the, the political sciences and stuff like that. I don't enjoy that. I don't like that. But I do keep a constant watch on, you know, the the politics of this country. Now, let me just throw this out there to you: is it's it's been spewed upon us many ideas. All right, and I am going to say names, um, but I'm going to come back around to what I'm challenging you to do. So just give me grace and hear me out. What I'm saying is that the biggest reason that over half of the Christians in this nation are saying that they're not even going to vote is because Donald Trump talks too mean or he's not strong enough on um, pro-life situations. Here's the truth is the media has been you know, um, sent out as a voice to distract and detract from the truth. Okay? Am I number one, am I saying that Donald Trump is, you know, a superstar, wonderful, you know, glamorous Christian of a man? I am not. He is a man. I said it in my statement. He is a man just like I'm a man. Okay? The same could be said about Kamala Harris. She is a woman, she is a human, a man, you know, and I don't mean that in the sex, I mean human, you know. And she has her flaws as well. What I've always said is that what we need to do is look what this platform says and what this platform says and compare it to the Bible and vote your conscience. I'm not telling you to vote Republican or Democrat. There's ugly on both sides of the aisle. That's just the truth of it. Now, back to Trump, okay? And this isn't a you know, pump Trump up. Trump has a lot of, of bad qualities. That mouth, you know, it's got him in some pretty, you know, pretty bad light along the way. But you know what? I know that since Roe versus Wade was placed back on the state's level, because our constitution sets up a republic, not a democracy. We operate in, de in democratic, you know, methods, right? When choosing leadership, most of the time we're supposed to, but that's not always the case. But the republic is not, you know, the government, the federal government is not meant to mandate what our lives are supposed to be like. They're supposed to be representatives. A, a conglomerate of all the state leadership is supposed to be, you know, our voice on that national level, right? Now, let's get past that because I want to get to the challenge is... All right, Trump says ugly things, but since, you know, Roe versus Wade was re removed, 10 states have completely abolished abortion. I am not for abortion. Now, I understand 
the the in and outs of people, you know, saying, well, what if the mother's life is at hand? I'm not saying just black and white, it's this or that. What I am saying is when it's, you know, a, a mother's at almost full term, then how could we say we're going to kill this baby? And that's what it is. You know, if, if a person murdered a pregnant woman, they would get charged with two counts of murder because her and the baby. So how's that different than aborting a baby? How's that? I mean, you say you're not killing the baby. Anyway, that's not my point. I'm, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. My point is the church, the church is shucking the responsibility to this country. You are meant to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Your voice is meant to be the voice of Jesus in this world. And if you are silencing your voice, and that's what your vote is, your vote is your seed. And if you don't sow your seed, then you should shut up. Because you have no right to complain about $4 a gallon gas. You have no right to complain about your, your grocery prices being 40% higher. You have no right to complain how in order to own a home, it costs you on average fifty dollars to $60,000 more to own a home. You have no right to complain about millions and millions and millions of illegal aliens crossing our border with, with nobody. With them being flown in under the radar. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is what's happening. There's a city in Ohio that literally a third of their whole population now is made up of illegal immigrants. And if you hold your vote back and do not vote, then you have no right to complain or have any sort of opinion about the economy, the um, you know wages, the you know, the EV mandates, the, I mean, anything and everything that has to do with this country. You know, we, we get this idea and it's, and it's, it's pushed by pastors, righteous, holier than thou pastors that look at Donald Trump and look down their nose and they say, well, he just talks mean and he does this and that. You know who else wasn't perfect and spotless and was pretty rough around the edges? King David. But we sure to glorify all the works of David and what he did. Now, am I comparing Trump to David? No, I'm comparing a man to a man, me to you, to them, to him, whoever, that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. So we need to get rid of the the, the, condesc the condescending, you know, holier than thou attitude and look at what, you know, we, 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 we have the opportunity to compare four years to four years. You have ears and eyes research what the platform is. Now, it's time's coming short. We've got, you know, I think 11 days until, you know, till uh, election day. And the whole point is, and I'm a pastor, I'm telling you to vote. I'm challenging you to vote. I'll even go as far, and I do. On one half, I do care who you vote for. But in the truth of it, number one, I am telling you, go and vote. Sow your seed, plant your seed, and expect God, his results to come to pass. Amen? So anyway, I'm not angry, but I am passionate about you need to make your voice heard and vote. Amen? I love you guys. I know it longer than I meant to, but hey, go vote. Do it. Love you guys.